Oh, uh, this is something I meant to bring up. <laughs> I almost said this should be our third Chippendale Rescue Rangers episode. Um, but something that came to my mind the other day was like, oh, we forgot to talk about when they're sneaking into the um, the Turkish baths or whatever it is, the sauna, and they're the Italian plumbers. And I'm pretty sure that was a riff on the Mario Brothers movie. With their, I'd when never done them. Yeah, I think it's because, like, oh, no, don't do the really bad Italian accent, the Brooklyn accent. You can't do a Brooklyn accent. Yeah, we're plumbers from Brooklyn. <laughs> and they're talking to the, the person behind the giant desk. And I thought, this has got to be a reference to Mario Brothers, surely. There was something else about uh, Rescue Rangers I meant to bring up with you. I completely... Oh, now I've blanked on it. Oh, God. We'll do a dedicated third episode on it soon <laughs> enough. We'll, every, every other week, we'll do a Rescue <laughs> Rangers episode. <laughs> well, this is what I mean about that film. It's just there's, there's so much depth to, depth to it. I just enjoy talking about it. It's a lot of fun. Mm. Um, yeah, you'll have to tell me when you go for your inevitable second viewing. Cause, uh, well, my brother wants to watch it um, after ah. hearing me sing its praises the other day. Um, even though he said he probably won't get half the references because of, you know, Disney Afternoons and whatnot. He doesn't really remember stuff like that. Mm. Oh, but, yeah. Uh, I said, uh... yeah, I'd be more than game to watch it again, just to uh, maybe, oh, what are you doing here? Uh, just to um, have the chance to talk to him about it, really. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think you should. That'd be a lot of fun. Mm. Um, <sighs> well, speaking of, should we, should we just dive straight into uh, everything we've got lined up? Because it could be a long one. Yeah, you you tell me about, you know, what what have you got on your slate? Because I can read off a list of the things that I think we're going to be talking about, or at oh. least touching upon. Okay, well, first and foremost, for the people uh, watching, Matt is on uh, Horizon Forbidden West this week, so uh, everyone appreciate his fantastic Hunting Horizon skills. abilities. Uh, yeah, we'll start with... Um, uh, we'll start with Doctor Strange, because... Um, Ooh, my favourite movie. <laughs> well, exact. In fact, I meant to go and listen to your rant before uh, before we did the hangout, just to just to kind of refresh my memory um, as to what it was you said. Um, I was surprised at how much I completely forgotten um, that you ranted about watching this film. Um, <laughs> it was just <laughs> I have aware of that. <laughs> um, yeah, I I think it's one of these situations that you often talk about uh, when I kind of go on about something, and then you watch it and you go, "Yeah, it wasn't. It wasn't." as bad as you said it was or you know it wasn't as, as good <laughs> kind of building <laughs> things up um yeah i just thought it was a, a a below average marvel film it didn't offend me in the in the same way that it um offended you uh th there are a lot of things about it that i think are really underwhelming in its creativity and then bits that are quite um quite good and you think oh why is there not more of that in this I think um, Elizabeth Olsen is standout excellent in this, more so than anyone else. Um, yeah, she's and, doing the best with what she's got given. Yeah, even even though the material isn't great, I, I you really feel her performance. And, mm. and uh, yeah, you, you, you can't really say much more than that. And it, it just really um, annoyed me, I guess, that they didn't go, I don't know, oh, where do we even start? Um, I felt... Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> no, there's a really good... Because of how good the Scar uh, Scarlet Witch is in the comics, you know, when she really gets to it, she's, she's like, uh, terrifying. And, yeah. you know, the, she's, she's like, Thanos levels of uh, deadly. You know, you, you get this really... Oh, just just this fee uh, just this feeling that that everything in the universe could come crashing down when she reaches her peak, and they they touch upon that in this where you think, oh my god, she's gonna, she's like Thanos, well beyond Thanos. Well, she's beyond Thanos, isn't she? It's yeah. every multiverse. Yeah, <laughs> she top this now. And I'm thinking, and I'm thinking, this is so good. Dive dive more into this, and then they pull back, and then there's lots of things that are just like, oh, you you're not you're not touching upon the things that should be touched upon. Uh, America Chavez is a, is a complete waste of time. Uh, mm -hmm. We we all know why she's in there. It's it's just like one for the lesbians. You don't <laughs> you don't need <laughs> you you don't need her in there to instigate the plot points. That the plot can happen without her. I was really disappointed as well. Um, this is just one of the things where you were talking about it a couple of weeks ago, and I I, I kind of it dropped out of my mind as I'm watching it. Um, my first thoughts when I saw the title, Multiverse of Madness, and watched the trailer, mul you know, for Multiverse of Madness, was the idea that following Spider-Man No Way Home, um, 
Strange had kind of opened up uh, tears into the multiverse and this would be the film where he kind of struggles to deal with the consequences of his actions, you know? Mm. And that is not what this film is. It just so happens no. that coincidentally the last film was about the multiverse and now here's a character that can jump in and out of the multiverse at will. And that was really underwhelming yes. and really disappointing. And not many multiverses at that. Four multiverses at most. Four multiverses and they're all more or less identical. They're just uh, versions of New York with different yeah. fashion <laughs> or different stoplights yes different so it's just really there's no unimaginative unimaginative there's no creativity you got bruce campbell in there kind of what is what was that seriously um yes have, it was such a bizarre waste wasn't it it is you have strange jibes about you know oh you'll find that in most multiverses things are free and it's like, what kind of socialistic, you know, yeah. berating is this? And she, it was so she just... tells Doctor Strange, never assume anything in the multiverses. But then she assumes, oh, this one's, you know, food's free. Mm. Yeah, it's... Um, yeah, I, I didn't I didn't hate it to the extent that you did. I thought there were, there were bits and pieces in there that, that were quite good. Um, mainly visually. Uh, Scarlet Witch, as I've already said. Um, I, I still can't get on with Benedict Cumberbatch as strange, and this mm. didn't help. Um, he, I, I think he's decent as a side character, like like No Way Home and like in the Avengers and things. But when you yeah. when you're with him for two hours, he just exhausts me as a character to <laughs> to to be invested in. He he just doesn't work for me in the slightest. And yeah. I think a lot of that is Benedict Cumberbatch, who I don't have a problem with as an actor. I think he's a talented actor, but in this role, I just have no interest in him. And interestingly, I mean, we'll talk about Morbius uh, shortly, but I I was watching Morbius without wanting to give too much away, thinking mm -hmm. I, I'd be really interested to see Matt Smith give his take on Doctor Strange. Because I think yeah, that would be I can see something that would yeah. be interesting. That would be a, well, a, 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 novel, a, a novel approach that I think he could do a lot with. Yeah, well... You sort of hit the nail on the head there with um, sort of it's a boring take on the character. It's the material he's given as well. The fact that this is a, a Doctor Strange movie about his relationship. And it's like, surely the whole point of Doctor Strange was that he wasn't into all of that. It was about his his pride that he takes in his work, you mm. know, and him being Sorcerer Supreme, which whatever the movie wants to tell us, he's the Sorcerer Supreme. I, yeah. I, yeah. Yeah. So, exactly. um the idea that it throws all that away, all the character development, all the stuff about, you know, his training and, and his mastery of the uh, the mystic arts, and instead it makes it a buddy cop movie where he's babysitting a kid again. Only yes. this time, it's the entire backstory of why he isn't with the woman that he'll never get with. And it's like, I don't give a flying fuck about that. I want to see extra dimensional shenanigans and cool stuff in my Doctor Strange movie. I don't need Pepper Potts and Tony Stark Mark II. Well, that's kind of, but uh, I I agree. But it's even missing the Iron Man three element. I find where there's no real um, motivating catalyst for why he suddenly has these feelings. I know, you know, I know, right? It comes out of nowhere. He doesn't have a moment of clarity at the end of Endgame or in Spider Man, where it's like, you know what? <clears throat> I've invested all of this. Or he looks into the multiverse and sees that in every single one of them, he's alone. Yeah. And it's a case of like, oh, wow, I, I had a chance at happiness and I never realised. And only by seeing myself in every dimension, I, I always assumed my work was what I'd leave behind. When mm. it's not, you know, love is all important. And maybe Christine should have been something I invested in. You know, that would have been a better angle rather than it being the, the literal crux of the entire movie. Yeah, and th these were all the things that it gives hints towards and never explores um the multiverse is such a, a wasted um aspect in this especially the idea it's 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 a thought that i've had before the idea that you know our dreams are uh, us existing in the multiverse i think you know people i don't know if you've ever had that thought before uh, just kind of playing around with your imagination and stuff uh, but i i've had that thought before and it's it's such an interesting concept and again it's kind of used fleetingly in this and then tossed mm. aside when it's it could be the basis itself for an entire film um it's very inception uh almost you know the the the, the, the kind of things that, that you could play around with that and they just use it as a 
a bit of a device to say, yeah, what you saw was real. And then mm. that's it. <laughs> and yes, yeah. it's, it's and, and it does that with quite a few different plot ideas. And it just, they just yeah, they just go from one thread to one thread to one thread, kind of um, uh, leaning constantly on, as you were saying, his romance with, uh, is it Christine? You said the name was? Christine, Rachel, yeah. Ra- Rachel McAdams. And it's not as though they have any chemistry for you to feel sad about the entire thing because I don't mind Rachel McAdams, but she's a very, she comes off cold in quite a lot of what I've seen. I've never seen The Notebook. I would like to, um, but I've, I've never really believed any of the relationships that she's been in in, in the films that I've, I've seen. And um, it just seems such a bizarre bit of casting that you wouldn't go for someone um i mean if, if i'm if i'm casting a love interest opposite this doctor strange i want someone who's exactly the same as he is and that's where he finds the attraction if, if, if that makes sense yeah yeah which i, I, I think, think is what they're going to lean into with the post credit scene with um calypso Callisto, mm. calypso yeah that was all uh uh, oh no, that's I'm thinking of Morbius. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's we'll uh, that's get... certainly a series of post credit scenes, isn't it? We'll get to that. We um, shall get to Morbius in due time. Yeah, so yeah, that would make me feel as though there's a real kinship that's been lost. But at no point, and this is, it was the same during the first film. No point in the first film or this film do I ever think, oh, these two are meant to be together. I really believe Strange when he says that uh, throughout all the multiverses, he's just heartbroken because he's lost this woman. It's like. You've never spoken about her once, you know? Yeah. You, th- th- she's never been your motivation to save the universe or anything like that. And it's kind of the same. I mean, I haven't seen WandaVision, so I mean, um, I'm, I'm sure yeah, that my, from don't. <laughs> my, um, my, my opinion doesn't mean much. But it's not as though they ever do anything with Wanda herself as to why she's taking the extent of measures that she is doing um you know uh, i mean well obviously you understand she's heartbroken she wants a family blah 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 blah. but at the same time she's always seemed to be smart enough to appreciate her own role and the Mm. multiverse as a whole and you know just have that awareness to think i don't have a family, but at least other multiverses do, which is something that um, what's the um, uh, the other sorcerer supreme called? Uh, I've forgotten. Baron uh, No, Wong? sorry, no, uh, Wong. That's it. Yes, sorry, Wong. Uh, which which Wong says to her, he's like, can't you just be happy? <laughs> you know that there's that these other places do exist where uh, where you do have a family, and she's like, no. And I'm thinking <laughs> that would be inconvenient for the plot. <laughs> Exactly, and I'm thinking, but I, th- I think she would, you know, the, this this version of Wanda, at least. I, I've seen nothing that would uh, mm. break her to this extent where she's, I mean, she, she, she can be that evil, but I've not seen a good enough reason to me. Um, Agreed. And as well as that, they only ever focus on the one, of, th- this is the problem with multiverse stories, okay? Which is why it's very difficult to get right. Even even dark that we were discussing the other day, I realised there's a massive plot hole in that which I hadn't seen the first time. But it's like you have the infinite multiverse, and yet she's obsessed with tormenting this one particular. Yeah, just the one family. <laughs> just the <Yeah>. one. <laughs> which just so happens to be the universe where the Illuminati are, which yep. is where the plot needs to happen yep. because lazy. I'm thinking, find yourself a multiverse where the wonder in that universe is like a deadbeat mother. And you know, yeah, just kick and her save out the kid. And, and save the kids. It's it's that. But it's it's even worse than that, isn't it? That I have to have full access to the multiverse because if my children ever get sick, I need to mm-hmm, be able mm-hmm. to go to another dimension to cure them. And it's just like that is really poor motivation. Yeah, um, it is. Also, the idea that um, I mean, going right back to the intro of the film, where we're meant to believe that Defender Doctor Strange is a villain because he tries to take Chavez's power. To save the multiverse, which is exactly. a stupid thing to do, because if he killed her, then 
bada bing bada boom no problem but if he kills her takes her power and then he dies the monster's gonna get the power regardless best yeah. to just kill chavez but it's a, it's so selfish it's the the entire multiverse is at risk and chavez is like no i'm too precious a flower yes that i i'm special and i have to survive at the risk of every other multiversal being well that's what bothers and, me as the film oh. goes on is that strange then adopts this mentality and i'm like did did i not mm. just see you in the last film in no way home willing to sacrifice all these villains because that was just the way life was supposed to be and they well, didn't... hell did we not see him give the time stone to thanos because you know the the greater good <laughs> uh, it's a complete I mean, I'm not overly, as I said, ad nauseum at this point, I'm not overly invested in Strange's character or uh, character arc because I just don't think it works. But even I'm stopping and saying, this this is not Doctor Strange. Doctor Strange is far more logical than this. He doesn't have <laughs> bouts of emotional uh, conscience, as far as I'm concerned, anyway. Uh, th- this version is he's very logical he he'll play it for what's best for humankind and without yeah. question what's best for humankind is to uh, you know blow up kill the girl yeah and 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 that's a point actually that um that's uh chuetel asia four or whatever his name is i can't remember his character name um makes isn't it he's like and, and i'm i'm cheering him on <laughs> going yes <Yeah. laughs> the only one with any sense um the, is this the, the good Mordo from the first movie or the botched one from this movie? Who is the same Mordo, but just with none of the uh, the intrigue and logic? Yeah, well, in this one, at least, he's he's happy to kill the girl. In in, in this film is, is what I'm talking about. I mean, it's all it's all a nonsense. Uh, all, all the multiverse stuff doesn't make any sense. It's all it's all ludicrous. Um, the... Illumina- uh! The... <laughs> the... <laughs> bush! Bush! It's a shame that the Illuminati is in this film when this film is such a hodgepodge of bad ideas. Well, good yeah. ideas done bad because it should be a really um, a, 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 a just one of the special moments in Marvel, mm. I think. This alternate version of a high court almost of, of, of superheroes. Yeah. And um, it's so underwhelming. We just have it diff- really is. different versions. It's the problem with all of this Marvel stuff now. Well, the, the entire concept of multiverse is just like, oh, it's just the new thing. There's nothing special about it. Multiverses are just the new big in thing for every um, franchise worth its salt now to be tinkering with. And it's nothing more than a Jingle Keys exercise of, yeah. look, who, look who we got for this cameo. Well, I don't mind that because I thought, okay, so, I mean... I should have really said at the very beginning of this spoilers because we're kind of just spoiling it all. But I will say yeah, it's on should... Disney Plus now. I imagine most people that want to see it have probably seen it in one shape. Yeah. Or form. So John uh, Krasinski as uh, as Mr. Fantastic is is good. It they they nail that. That's a really nice reveal. Um, it's just it's a it's... nice reveal that's very poorly executed, as my rant attests. To. Yes. <laughs> uh, I mean, but the thing with that as well is all of the other characters are um, are entwined with the heroes that they come to represent so surely um the uh, john krasinski uh, krasinski version of mr fantastic exists in the 616 um to to carry on if that makes sense so you'd you think I mean? he said that there's currently no plans for him it's nothing more than a cameo at this point yeah. you know just a bit of fan all, casting all i'm uh, saying is it's like it, it doesn't follow along with the con- continuity seeing as you know yeah. miss marvel is uh danvers's best friend in that film uh, Captain Britain is obviously Peggy from the What If yeah. TV series. So I mean, the, the 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 superheroes do line up to their counterparts. So you know what I'm saying. So uh, if if you're playing it through, then Krasinski mm. should be somewhere in line with the Fantastic Universe. But I mean, whatever. Um, yeah. In fact, they got the Black Bolt actor to uh, to come back and reprise his role, the, the Forgotten Inhumans TV show. I and found even... that so funny, I must say. I did find that really funny. He's like, yeah, no, it was a thing. Serious. <laughs> <laughs> I know and you look don't... what they do to you. <laughs> I know you don't remember me, but... <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so it is. It's just, as I was saying, you've got Captain Britain and you've got... Uh, uh, Captain Marvel, but it's played by whatever her name was. Monica Rambeau's Captain yeah. Marvel. Quasar, um, essentially. Yeah, and so you have Mr. Fantastic, and then you have Black Bolt, 
and uh, then you have Professor X, and you think, okay, mm. so you've got Professor X, you've got who dies uh, for the third time. <laughs> we've got, seen Patrick Stewart die as Charles Xavier on three occasions now. We have. Uh, just let me finish this up. So you got um, Professor Xavier, you got Miss Fantastic. I'll even accept Black Bolt, but the other two, it's just really underwhelming um, mm. that they're just female. Well, not female counterpart to Miss Marvel, but uh, female counterpart to Captain America and um, the best friend, almost, of of, of Mm. Miss Marvel. And, yeah, it's just... Really? This is... This is uh, is your Illuminati. This is your Illuminati. This is what you're Mm. going with. This is, you know, should be one of the big moments in in Marvel, uh, in, in the MCU, because you can literally do anything, and this is what you're throwing at us. Um, mm. Have, like, I don't know, have a, a version of Odin or something that's, um, you know, in, entwined. Because that's what... Sorry, I'm going off on all different kinds of tangents. <laughs> you have the multiverse. You can literally do anything you want, and yet you ascribe so closely to what we already have. G- yeah. Just blow the doors off the damn thing. What is the problem? It's it'd make it far more interesting, and they don't do anything like that. And um, yeah, Odin is played by um, uh, Daniel Craig, uh, or Ooh, you yeah. know, something like that. Thor uh, as played by Tom Hiddleston. Oh, that's a good one. Oh, that would be very cool. Just something that's going to mess with, with people's minds a little bit, or just make them smile. And yeah, it just I feel as though that's a um, the film in a nutshell is we get the right idea we execute it poorly and in the end we just come off come out as underwhelmed and like grossly mis-executed and um it's not even as though uh the sam raimi directing brings anything to it because it's just it's filmed exactly the same as aside from one or two shots and you know you've got zombie strange in there which is I, f- I feel as though he must have had in his contract. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> must have Zombie Strange and a couple of, like, smash-bang zoom-ins. Yeah. Uh, but aside from that, the rest of it is, you know, it's just uh, a Marvel film. And just a, a massively missed opportunity. And just sums up where the MCU is at the minute, aside from mm. No Way Home, which is becoming more and more like an anomaly. Um, yeah, well, f- we can say, well, that was at least probably partially because of the Sony property, but we've seen how they handle their own franchises, so you can't even say that. It is a complete anomaly. Mm. And it's so disheartening that we mentioned it before, John Watts won't be getting these uh, Fantastic Four movies, and he mm. would have been just the saviour. of. I would have so much faith if that man could do the Fantastic Four movies, and uh, instead the only bit of future proofing we had lately was the writer of Doctor Strange, The Multiverse of Madness and Loki will be directing an X-Men movie, and ri- <laughs> well writing an X-Men movie it's like oh fuck no we lose John Watts and we gain the writer of Multiverse of Madness as a franchise writer now hmm. oh it's very discouraging Daniel, it's very discouraging it's, I mean it's a shame what's happened to Patrick Stewart isn't it really mm. um, that seeing him on the screen isn't more of a celebration reprising it's it's i mean at this point professor xavier is a bit of a meme um yes the extent to which he's appeared and been killed off and just reappears and you know again that would all be fine but it's it's overexposure it's what he's done on picard and Mm. you know you you can't really get away from any of that which is a shame because um Arguably, you know, the presentation of the animated Charles Xavier, which is what they do. They put him in the in the yellow uh, in, in the yellow wheelchair. They they do yeah, the they an- give him the theme. They get the animated X Men sting. It's it's f- fantastic. It should all be there, and yet you can't help but think, "Yep, here he is again." Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's, it's just Patrick Stewart. Is it Picard? Thing. Is it um, is it uh, is it? Charles Xavier, who knows? I only see Patrick Stewart doing Patrick That's Stewart it, exactly, doing yeah. The only time I can I don't see Patrick Stewart anymore is when he's playing um, Avery Bullock in American Dad. That's the only time I can escape from Patrick Stewart. It's like, oh yeah, when Patrick Stewart was funny. Mm. <laughs> I remember that. Mm. Mm. Yeah, that's a shame. And what, uh, speaking of that, they never do anything with when he dives into Wanda's 
brain and finds oh, no. and finds the wonder that's being locked up and i'm thinking oh, okay so she's gonna they, they're gonna save the wonder inside her brain and that's gonna be the redemption story and she'll just kind of flick her back into life and say oh my god what have i done um but they don't <laughs> <laughs> they the fact that charles xavier is it. trying to put he's in his astral projection form and he's trying to pull a woman out from under rubble it's like this is not how that works mm. <laughs> you you literally have the power of your mind scape it's like, oh, maybe if you move the rubble, I can pull you out the hole in the rubble. <laughs> Do you have a chisel? Um, anyway. You know who would have a chisel? Probably Vision. Wouldn't it be great if she wanted to bring Vision back to life rather than her fake children? Or what about her brother, Quicksilver, who she was very attached to? Or her parents? Maybe we could find them in here and they could talk sense at her. What's that? The writer hasn't seen any of the other Avenged movies? <laughs> oh dear, that does make it a problem for me. Yeah, the total um, blanking, I suppose, of, of Quicksilver is just... It's really upsetting, isn't it? Uh, mm. I mean, he, he wasn't the best uh, version of Quicksilver in Age of Ultron. It was quite poorly written and um, the design wasn't great. Taylor Johnson was probably the wrong actor. Um, yeah. but that's an emotional anchor. I mean, they're both integral to each other, aren't they? Quicksilver mm. and Wanda, uh, uh, um, Quicksilver and uh, Scar Scarlet Witch, uh, Peter and Wanda. It's um, the idea that she just now exists by herself and, and has done for God, when was Ultron like 10 years ago or something? Uh, 2015. Mm. It's um, and and he's had no definition on the arc of her character, just feels mm. so wrong when you've got especially with all these multiverses again and that's another missed opportunity where's the multiverse where um where quicksilver's still alive and vision's still alive and yeah you know maybe hawkeye died and and quicksilver lived you know there's all these possibilities they could have played around within one division and they didn't they had eight i think eight or nine episodes to play around with it and they didn't do anything mm. um and then you have a movie that's meant to be a doctor strange sequel but they decide to make it about wanda and they still don't do anything with it but I don't mind that because she was the most interesting part of the film. It's just as you as you say, they don't do anything with it, and uh, yeah, that's always the the problem with multiverses. Is if you're going to do it, you need to be on your A game when it comes to thinking through the logical um, motivations of your character or, or or the emotional motivations of your character and what they will do. They won't just fit your plot synopsis. You know, you really need to get inside the head and know their wants and their desires and uh, their losses and all that kind of thing. And, and, and they never do that because, yeah, the motivations in this for Wanda didn't make any sense for all that she'd been through. Um, and, and it brings up the question of, uh, you know, <laughs> uh, I, I think you may have mentioned it in, in the last one, or I've certainly heard someone say it. Who, who do those children belong to? Because Vision was a <laughs> robot. <laughs> <laughs> she know? she just made the children. She just whipped them out of the ether. Mm. And then they try and get around that by saying, oh no, in other universes. Uh, but it's like, it's so... Uh, yeah, it's it's balked. They get around it by semi-addressing it and then not addressing it. Like that god-awful line when uh, he goes, Wanda, your children aren't real. You made them with magic. And she goes, all mothers make children with magic. And it's like, <laughs> no, fuck off. <laughs> fuck off. <laughs> um... Um, what else was I going to say? There's, there's something else in there too. Uh, da, 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 da. Um, oh, that's right. Yeah, you'll have to try and refresh my memory. But Endgame, um, Doctor Strange goes through all the infinite permutations of yeah, beating fourteen million of Thanos. He, I thought. He went into the multiverse and saw all of the different um, times that that they came out as successful and, and how that happened. Am, am I wrong there? Did he look into... I, I think they're parallel timelines rather than the multiverses. They, it's a difficult one, isn't it? Because what is a timeline and what is a multiverse? Mm. It's just strange how... There was a what was the what was the figure he quoted something like fourteen. I think billion, it was 14, 14 million. Fourteen million to one, and yet in all the multiverses he goes to, that they win. <laughs> the Avengers ultimately win. And like, <laughs> yeah. Well, like, we, do they all just follow the same 
And that's why it's so boring, this version of their multiverses. It, it, they don't. They're, they're concurrent timelines. They're, there's not really anything to differentiate them if Thanos gets beaten in every single mm. multiverse. It's just... Anyway, I'm bored of talking about this now. It's... Did Thanos win in the paint dimension? That's what I want to know. Yes. <laughs> Did he get the infinity sludge? I mean, that's a very impressive thing to watch, but it doesn't make any sense. <laughs> no. <laughs> you can and, say a lot about that with the movie in general. And I Looks also, pretty at times, not and, always. And I also found that they um, double shot their load because that happened in No Way Home. And mm-hmm. I was watching it thinking, I've just seen this. Why are we, why are we doing it again? Yes, um, I've seen it done and better. Yes, exactly. I mean, yeah, the one in No Way Home is, is phenomenal. So, yeah, it's it's... Again, I'm not overly offended by it because... I just don't care at this point. Um, it's it's below average and should have been better. And this is just what I expect from Marvel these days. So uh, I it's that's just sad. Yeah, unfortunately. So um, should we should we go into the? <laughs> I, I think well, as well. I think do you want to do a shit sandwich where we yeah. can talk about something good in the middle, or do we want to roll straight into Morbius? <laughs> no, we'll we'll get it all that now. Um, I think though. I mean, I might not have thought as badly as you did about Strange because I started off with Morbius, and um, <laughs> I, I, I hated Morbius, uh, Matthew. I really was very annoyed at myself for watching it, knowing that it's a bad film, and yet <laughs> thinking, "Well, Matt wants to watch it. Matt's gonna go into it thinking of it as a as a meme film. He's gonna he's gonna laugh at it. So I'll join in. I'll join along. I'll." I'll I'll get myself into the frame of mind to think I'm going to laugh at this and I'm going to have a really good time at how how silly it is and I couldn't do it because it is garbage it is stupid it is boring <laughs> it is not fun in the slightest I just wanted to kill myself for uh an hour and 40 minutes I think it is and it's summed up <laughs> by the post credit sequences which are just like shitting into a bowl of cornflakes and I just hate everything about this, <laughs> about Sony and how they're handling these Marvel properties. It's crap. It is terrible. You mean it hasn't got you excited for um, Aaron, what's his name, playing Craven the vegan animal rescuer, oh. formerly oh, Hunter. Yeah. Aaron Taylor Johnson, who we just mentioned. Yeah, yeah. As, as Craven, wonderful. Um, it's it's not even. It, I, I I can't treat it as a meme. I can't treat it as a joke. It is. It's. I couldn't even look at it as like Transformers bad because there is sometimes redeemable things about this Transformers films. This is like Fifty Shades of Grey bad. This, this is just Ooh. that's that's how bad I found this film. I was bored, stupid. It's doesn't even do anything so bad as for me that you can laugh at it. It's just uncreative. It's just unimaginative. Jared Leto takes himself far too seriously. Whoa, 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 whoa. Jared Leto was in this movie. <laughs> Who did he play? The, the times when it tries to be funny are so misjudged that it's just painful. Oh, it's crap. It is not good. Tell me how much you enjoyed it. Go on, I'll, I'll I still want to know who Jared Leto played. He, he played one of the vampire bats. He got really method. And uh, ah, okay, that he, was, explain it. he was vampire bat number three coming out of the Costa Rican cave because because that really went somewhere. That that was a really pivotal moment in the film. Yeah, it was all going, wasn't it? Mm. Um, I mean, I, I was just so impressed by by a Michael Morbius autobiography starring Michael Morbius as Michael Morbius. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, it was a stroke of genius, really, because no one else could have played it with <laughs> such pitch perfection as the man himself. <laughs> you know, Daniel Day Lewis, maybe. Uh-huh. Um, you know, someone that could really just lose himself in the role, but shy of like going to the source itself, it would have been an inferior product. Um, I mean, I, I couldn't tell where the film ended and the, the life story, you know, began. Mm. It was just that impressive. I, I was just immersed, utterly mm. immersed. Um, but jokes aside, I came from it with the opposite angle of you and Doctor Strange because I witnessed Doctor Strange first. I, I was not as annoyed by this film because it was it was bad in a throwback way that we've long since got beyond in movies like Incredibly ben boring, dead. ill thought out it's it's really bad but it's not universe shattering in the way that doctor strange was okay. you know it's not building off of like a, a strong base and insulting its legacy mm. and uh, and failing to deliver a sequel to a film i wanted to watch 
it's um, it's exactly what I always expected a Morbius movie would be. Mm. Um, so it didn't disappoint and it couldn't annoy me. Um, and it's better than Venom. It's better than both of the Venoms. Oh, do you think? Uh, I'm going to say I rather liked Morbius for the first time oh. ever in all of his appearances. Um, not to say he's a great character or anything. What the fuck is going on with this? Reload, you bint. Um, yeah, it... <laughs> so, yeah, my thought processes were... Um, wow, it's amazing. We're leaping straight into this movie. We don't even know what's wrong with him. Mm. Michael Morbius is a man who has too much blood, too little blood. <laughs> his blood is too hard. I'm not too sure, but he needs something with his blood. And he's got a best friend who also has some blood-related issue. Again, too much, too little. Who knows? They never name it. They never diagnose it. We just know that he has it. Mm. <laughs> and it's progressive and yet not um it's getting worse and it's going to kill him but he seems to be better now than when he was a kid exactly uh, How- it's all over the shop and it leaps and bounds about with absolutely no sense of timing like the, the film is a jumbled mess when it comes to editing it's like did i miss half of a movie getting to this <laughs> who are these characters why are we just accepting verbatim that this is what's going on the, then the film just decides to end because it's run out of things to punch yeah. And then it goes, oh, uh, post credit scenes, that'll sum it up. Um, mm. Here's here's a sting, uh, the woman's alive, and she's a vampire now, probably. Um, <laughs> Matt Smith's character has two different names throughout the entire film. Yes. Uh, what is it? It's He's Milo, but his it's, actual name is something like... Um, Lucius? Lucius, or, or it, Luca. He's, he's, but everyone calls him Milo, or Milo, because yeah. that's what Morbius called him as a kid. And I thought, when... Um, when Professor Moriarty from the Sherlock Holmes movies called him Milo, I thought, but his name's not Milo. Have I missed something here? And it's like, no, no, everyone just goes along with the meme that his name is now Milo. It does. <laughs> to the fact that even he calls himself Milo throughout the film until the very end when he goes, you gave me my name because my actual name is Lucas. And it's like, oh, yeah. <laughs> and then the end credits roll and it's Matt Smith plays Milo. <laughs> It doesn't have... It, Matt Smith was on interview saying, yeah, I didn't know if I was like two different characters or not. This makes no sense. Um, wow. <laughs> um, yeah, it's it's a jumbled goddamn mess of a film. But as I say, I, I found myself enjoying it for its vacuous stupidity and its incomprehensibly, yet yeah, incredibly um, superficial plot elements. Uh, I, I couldn't be mad with it. And I sort of found myself getting into it. Not in a, in no. a good way. No, not not at all in a good way, but I'd say compared to Doctor Strange, I I at least had fun because this is a, a garbage movie. It's nothing more, nothing less. And then I started to get annoyed because I only went to watch this movie because it's it's become agreed by the internet and pop culture as a whole that Morbius is the movie we all shit on. Mm. And doc, meanwhile, Doctor Strange and, and Black Widow and all these other movies get a free pass. And it's like, no... Those are worse. Those are far worse. Morbius is bad, but it's not absolute dreck in the way that these movies are. Um, it, it's just a cash grab. You know, I, I, a cash grab is what it is, but an utter bungling that fails to adhere to like 23 movies and five TV series of continuity uh, is inexcusable in my eyes. Uh, particularly for the money that was being thrown at Doctor Strange and Black Widow and everything else. And Morbius is exactly as cheap as you expect. But I enjoyed Matt Smith in it a lot. He seemed to be having a lot of fun with the uh, the two characters. I really enjoyed him. I mean, I've I've got a bias. I I like Matt Smith in general. I've done ever since his casting as um, the 11th Doctor. But, um, yeah, I'd say even Jared Leto, he didn't rub me up the wrong way. And the fact that... You know, behind the scenes, he never dropped character. So even when he was going to the bathroom, he was hobbling about on his crutches and delaying production. It's hilarious. Mm. Um, and I found that more endearing than when he was a joker and mailing condoms and dead rats to people. Um, so, uh, yeah, Morbius caught me off guard. It is, it is exactly what it is, which is a film that no one should really watch. But it's certainly not worth the, the complete ire that it's given, especially when there's so much worse out there so so much worse uh, I, that's getting a free pass i disagree but uh i i, I we we're both approaching it from, from two separate yeah. points of view I, I i suppose i i just thought it was um 
Yeah, well, I, I pretty much spelled it out. I, <laughs> I, I just, I completely disagree with you. It's uh, aside from Matt Smith, which I agree with. He, uh, there was, um, no, actually, th- there were two parts that I thought was were good. The first um, scene where uh, Mobius goes all vampire and he's stalking mm. the crew. I thought that was that was. I was really surprised at how effective. Yeah, that it was, was more visceral than I thought yeah, it was going to be. I thought because it... Venom really pulled its punches. Venom was going out of its way to be bloodless. Mm, it was really effective um, in a, uh, you know, it had proper horror film vibes. And I thought, wow, if this is where this film's going, this could be pretty interesting. And it doesn't. That's literally the, <laughs> the only time it does that. Um, and then It's like a really shit Blade, essentially. That's the best way to sum up Morbius. It's, it's everything that Blade was trying to do, but <laughs> wrong. <laughs> <laughs> and then Matt Smith is, is a lot of fun because he just chews the scenery and... Mm. Um, and uh, revels in 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 doing that, but he feel, feels like he's not a part of that film because yeah. he's playing it a lot, a lot camper than the film wants to be. If, yeah, if, the if, film's trying to be very serious about uh, the speed at which it leaps into it as well. Oh, uh, I combined bats and human DNA. Mm. That should cure my my disease and also blood related woes. Oh, and yeah. That's pretty much as it's dropped in to the film five minutes in <laughs> yes it is and what annoyed me as well as i was watching it is he he he, he says to his assistant slash future lover he's uh, <laughs> about um he didn't tell her of any any of this because it's illegal and on a need to know basis and so if it's already illegal what he's doing why does he then head off to international waters to 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 do the <laughs> To do the damn thing. I'm like, you're already breaking law, you idiot. Why do you need to... Why do I know. <laughs> and the fact that he has a bait... Well, his hospital apparently only has one other member of staff in it. <laughs> Why not just do your research there? Yeah. Where all your equipment is? <laughs> yeah. There's just none of it that makes any it's stupid goddamn sense. It's, it's a really fucking stupid movie. It's um, Daredevil 2003... X Men: The Last Stand levels of like inco- well no X Men: Last Stand was offensively bad. Um, yeah, they don't really explain how. Okay, so he's merged his DNA with the DNA of a bat. Okay, I get sonar. I get the blood drinking. Fine, but do bats teleport as smoke? Is that how bats get around? Uh, I mean, I'm not a zoologist or anything, but that just feels off to me. Yes, um, and. <laughs> I did laugh when um, he describes how he has a kinship with the bat silvers. <laughs> oh, so many stupid oh. moments. Because that's, that seems to be the first time he does it as well. We don't see a scene before that where he, he develops his understanding of his kinship. He just waltzes into this vacuum of bats. <laughs> yeah, they treat me like a brother, yet they attack Matt Smith. Yes, I'm glad you pointed that out because that that's what pissed me off about that scene as well. I mean, <laughs> aside from just being a stupid scene um, that lasts all of two minutes, you think, wow, they're going to have a showdown. Oh no, that's it. It's finished. He because because he, he stabs and that, how brutal is he towards Matt Smith as well? He's it's like, unfair. He, yeah. he just goes and straight up murders him. And Matt Smith's like, "You're killing me, Morbius." And he says, "I know." <laughs> it's the only way. And I uh, again, sort of, uh, because Wanda's motivations are just so absolutely appalling. And all when I say Wanda, this stands for like every MCU villain apart from you know No Way Home, which gets a pass. Um, but um, at least Matt Smith's motivations felt a little bit um, on point. You know, he spent his life as a cripple. Oh, and by the way, that opening scene where I don't know what kind of borstal environment they place that hospital. But the young boy on crutches goes outside to collect his letter from the local boys. <laughs> yeah. And they beat the shit out of him yeah. just for being on crutches. It's like, what the fuck? Move the school. Move the hospital. Do anything. Just, this is horrible. Um, why are they so malicious? It's like something out of um, It. <laughs> um, but yeah, the idea that Matt Smith has spent his entire life uh, in a life of luxury, I guess, but, you know, with a death sentence hanging over his head. And it's like, well, now I have all the power. I have all the life. I can do whatever I want for the first time. I'm a god. I want to run with it. Uh, you should be running with it too, brother, sort of thing. And it's like, okay, there's, there's something to work with there. Yeah, there. There's a level. I can sort of see where he's coming from. But then going the whole, I'm going to murder your lover 
mm. slash assistant and it, the motivation comes and goes in ebbs but it's like there's there's a kernel of something there it's certainly better than um god who's the villain in black widow the mobster that's in everything oh um, not danny dyer but he might as well ray be. ray winston ray Win- that's one yeah, when Ray Winston's going, you know what the problem is with uh, with the world? It's got too many little girls in it. <laughs> it's like, yep, yep, that that sounds a winning motivation. Yeah, bravo, Marvel, <laughs> bravo. Um, um, so, yeah, I could almost buy the motivation of Milo, Lucas, Luther in, in this film by, by just comparison to the uh, the utter shit that's come before it. But mm. It's still a really bad film. It's it's a really really bad film. <laughs> Goes without saying, no one should watch it. But as I, say, I just think it's being unfairly hated on because there's there's worse films that are going out their way to like target audiences. And at no point did I ever feel that this film was like mocking the fan base or attacking the fan base or anything like that. It just felt like a, a I, piece I just, of shit film that they felt they had to make because they were contractually obligated to. I just think I think they're memeing Sony at this point because of how absolutely clueless Sony are. That's my under well, that, that's how I'd interpret the situation, because um, as we've discussed many times, Sony is entirely oblivious to fan, you know, desires. They mm. are doing what they well, they're just doing what Avi Arad wants. He's he's got this vision in his head, his psychotic head that's just. Christ knows what planet he lives on. and uh, Whatever planet the symbiotes come from. Mm. And they are blind to the fact that they're... Well, no, I suppose Venom made a lot of money. But um, fan feedback on the idea of, of Morbius movies and uh, Aunt May solo spy movies and uh, Craven the Hunter movie, they're just so in their own head and so narcissistic that when Morbius came around and it showed itself to be as bad as it is, mm. um, I think people are just like reveling in Sony's own stupidity almost because, um, yeah, for, for all the reasons I've just said, I, that's that's how I interpret it. It's like, how are you not aware, self, self-aware yet that we're laughing at you? We're not laughing with mm. you, we're laughing at you. And the way that Sony then went and re-released... <laughs> the the film in cinemas because they thought oh we're onto a winner people are making fun of it they'll go and see it it's like no 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 we are laughing at you listen to us we're laughing at you not with you and they still don't get it and oh I, I imagine that Craven will be memed into oblivion and it's just a total waste of money it's a waste of fantastic um uh, it, uh you know characters and properties that. Uh, could be doing something interesting and just aren't. Well, I mean, Morbius isn't anywhere near it. Yeah, Morbius was character. never going to be the crowd pleaser. But um, you know, someone like Craven, who who could would make an excellent um, uh, uh, villain in in a Tom Holland Spider Spider Man film, mm. I'm sure. And they're giving him a <laughs> they're giving him a makeover where he's <laughs> he's an animal lover, animal rescuer. <laughs> one of Jesus. one of Spider Man's most brutal enemies from the uh from years past it's just, i mean craven's last hunt is an, is an iconic story <laughs> one of the most iconic spider-man stories and now he's an animal lover vegan oh my god it's just nuts. yeah whenever i think craven the hunter i always picture that scene of him hunched over spider-man's grave you know the lion head open vest and his black hair and his bulging biceps and now trying to picture aaron jacob paul playing a vegan loving soy munching version that's a friend to the animals Oy. <laughs> it's impressive it really is um well um he was originally going to be the villain in the third movie wasn't he that for the longest time before uh, yeah. it became like the multiverse it was going to be craven hunting spider-man it's like ooh, that's interesting that's something a little bit new mm. um yeah that interesting thing what they could have potentially done with that if they hadn't gone the multiverse route yeah um that that would have been fun um and it's again it just kind of makes it even more annoying that they're going this the solo route now rather than uh doing something interesting and and again it's like so 
spoilers for the end of the film, even though it doesn't really make any difference at this point. <laughs> um, we have our uh, Sinister Baffling Six cameo. I imagine we've mm. got Michael Keaton back. <laughs> oh my God. Speaking of, yeah, so they decide to use the multiverse in this as well, following on from uh, No Way Home. And uh, Michael Keaton's plucked out of the 616 and dropped into whatever verse Morbius is in. And For no good reason. He just magically has all of his uh, suit and stuff, all of his vulture suit. And... Yeah, which is weird because that was powered by Chitari tech. And as so far as we're aware, this universe isn't, you know, it, it hasn't had a Thanos attack. Mm, mm. And so, he, he decides to get in touch with Morbius of all people, of all people. about starting <laughs> some sort of uh, club. Club, <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's, it makes my head hurt. It, it really does. does. I, the, the fact that even they don't know how it works. It's like, well, surely at the end of uh, No Way Home, it was all about, you know, the, the spell makes people forget that Peter Parker and Spider-Man, well, they forget who Peter Parker is. You know, we know there's a Spider-Man. We don't know about Peter Parker. Yeah. So how that translates into Michael Keaton getting dropped off in a parallel universe and being aware he's in an alternate universe, mm. it, it's baffling. It's painfully confusing what they're trying to convey in that uh, brief, what would you say? One minute total for the two scenes. In yeah, sixty seconds of screen time. What they managed to achieve is almost impressive. It is, and so you've got to say if they've got uh, Vulture, they've got Morbius, they've got Craven, um, all to go into this Sinister Six. Who else do we think they're going to be dredging out Venom? of Venom ditch? To oh, Venom, of course. I completely forgot about them. Um, yeah, the big money maker, Avid Ari is Ari Ari Arid, our, our pal. Um, he's not going to uh, let an excuse to have Venom in a team up movie uh, mm. go to waste. So yeah, that's going to happen. So yeah, so that's uh, four we've got. And who else were they pitching? You think uh, I guess Jack Russell is on his way. He's going to get a spin-off show, but that's a, uh, a Disney rather than Sony. So. Probably not him. Um, Don't think they'd dare touch any of the legacy characters, uh, Doc Ock or Green Goblin. No. Or, um, um, Rhino. Although Rhino. Uh, Rhino possibly. Yeah. Um, yeah. Craven. Uh, we already got Craven in We've the got Craven. Um, who yeah. else? Shocker. Perhaps. Oh, Aloy. Don't be like that, you stupid woman. It wouldn't be a surprise if they get Paul Giamatti from the uh, Amazing Spider-Man Two rhino oh they, why not at this they point they never yeah. did anything with him did they um, the one that they knew they couldn't salvage <laughs> mm. we can save andrew garfield we can save electro hell even the lizard we can give a bit of a redemption but we can't save giamani i'm sorry you'll just have to take your oscar and be happy with that <laughs> <laughs> yeah and you know they're going to try and um kind of strangle spider-man into the entire thing eventually so it's all the good work they're doing with the tom holland spider-man at the minute it's going to get Mm-hmm. undone in uh, in in a couple of years without question oh god uh, yeah it's just i mean i nearly texted you on um, the thursday morning when did i watch it i watched it thursday evening and said um how do you fancy an impromptu reviews and retrospectives oh, no, session for morbius because uh, you know it'd be a good way to to jump on the meme and maybe get some views i'm so glad i didn't because <laughs> I, I feel as though I've said everything I need to say. I just yeah. I just don't like that film. I think you could just go and watch the Fifty Shades of Grey review. <laughs> <laughs> An exchange. Uh, exchange. Yeah. yeah. There's yeah. nothing to be gained by watching it. That's the thing. I think I I can watch any of the state, uh, and again, uh, amid Spider-Man, I can watch any of the Phase 4 Marvel movies and get Fantastic Beast levels of, like, hate rage mileage out of them mm. but the morbius movie it's like what is that to say <laughs> yeah and that's it i don't i don't hate it i just i i hate myself for watching it because it's so boring <laughs> and mm. devoid of creativity um yeah so i mean the, the the point i was making earlier about it being entirely serious until it decides to have a sense of humor where morbius is beating up a I don't know what they're doing. They they get money laundering or money. Um, yeah, I don't know. Uh, yeah, they're money. They're printing money, aren't printing they? The counterfeiters. Counter counterfeiters. Thank you. That's the word I was looking for. And then he steals their, but only with the intent to steal their lab. 
But during this, he seems to decide to get a sense of humour and starts making Spider-Man like quips and then calls himself Venom. And I'm like, D- did you notice this? And I, and I just was very confused <laughs> as to what was going on. <laughs> it's like, why does this kid all of a sudden have a... trying to play it as a superhero with a sense of humour? It's, it's, it's really know. bizarre, isn't it? It's uh, no doubt Sony trying to cash in on their franchise potential. Like, no, we've got to make him likeable. We've got to make this guy, you know, the next Venom because Tom Hardy might not come back, so we need to have the next sort of light-hearted but dangerous bad boy in the Pantheon. I mean, you know, credit where it's due. To say that, um, uh, what's his face? Jared Leto's nearly 50, I think, isn't he? He looks absolutely outstanding. I did not know that. Yeah, he, yeah, he's in good shape. Let me double check. I mean, to be fair, he might just be so method that if he believed that Michael Morbius was in his 30s, he would look 30, just through sheer <laughs> method alone. Uh, Jared Leto, 1971. Yeah, 51. Wow. Oh, my God. He's um, he's a ridiculously youthful man. And um, and that's coming from us. <laughs> yes. Uh, how old is his... Time? Um, no, the uh, who, who he was starring opposite... Uh, Oh. Adria Arjona, because I'm she just was a perfectly charming thing, completely, <laughs> you know, lacking in any character, but you know, she she acted. Yeah, she was nice to look at, um, but I'm just curious because, um, oh, I sent it you, didn't I? There was this massive hoopla around the Jurassic Park all of a sudden, and it being immoral and quite despicable <laughs> almost that Laura Dern's character um it was insinuated that she was in a relationship with with Sam Neill's character and there was 20 years age difference or something like that and how in Isn't this... that usually how it works men tend to go for younger women or is she older than him she looks older than him she does but no she was like 20 25 years younger than him or something but <laughs> no one brought up this um this age gap as being a problem until recently. And that was one of the, one of the things doing the round was, you know, was, uh, was Dr. Grant preying on this young, um, <laughs> you know, she's new to the field and all that kind of thing. It was, you know, making it you know, for a second that I thought we were talking about Jurassic world dominion. It's like, surely at their age, it doesn't matter anymore. The age gap is fairly closed with that. But, um, okay. The first movie is getting hit on. Right? Yeah. Yes, the first of movie. Course. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Jurassic Park. I did say Jurassic Park. But are Park. they, though? I never got the idea that they were, like... Well, there was, like, an, an insinu- romantic an insinuation and but things. It, it, and for, yeah. what, for whatever reason, they've decided now that that's problematic. Anyway, my point is, um, if that's problematic, then this should also be problematic. Because uh, Adria Ajorna, who played um, Martine in Mobius, was born in 1992. Jared Ooh. Leto was born in... 1971 so i mean here we are 20 years later and uh where's he where's he outrage where's the outrage i want to well, see the same me. thing with um tom cruise in the mummy where his love interest was was half his age or more than half his age mm. i want to see people outraged about this uh, they're outraged as soon as you tell them there's a reason to be outraged yes and then they swiftly move on and get outraged by the next thing Although it's I, outrage. I suppose their argument will be that uh, she's 30. And well, surely the argument should be love finds a way, regardless of age <laughs> boundaries. <laughs> huh, okay, so she she played Dorothy in Emerald City in 2017, that TV Emerald show? Emerald City. Hispanic that Dorothy, that's a new one. Rings a vague bell, actually. I think I saw a trailer for it. Let's have a look. Oh, she's also in True Detective. Ooh, the first season. Um, 2015. That'll be the second, I think. Let's have a look. Which I haven't seen. I love the third season. Where the... New Blade and Deacon Frost team up to tackle racism. Uh, did I see the third? Is there a third? Yeah, it's really good. I don't I remember Yeah, it's uh, Steve, Steve Dorff and... Um, uh, Ali, um, I always forget his name. Um, 
the the, the guy who's in everything nowadays, uh, but he's a really good actor. Um, yeah, it's uh, it's really really good. Well worth watching. When did that come out? Uh, a couple of years ago. <gasps> oh, right. Yeah, no, I didn't see it. I did not see that because it the is second very much season worth your time. was so disappointing that mm-hmm. uh, I stayed away. I mean, seriously, when when you're talking about like um just disappointing uh, tv series the second season of true detective is on another level of bad <laughs> i never even watched it i i heard of its reputation and thought you know what i don't want it tarnished and then three started getting really good press and it was um they actually gave him time to go away and write a script rather than saying okay mm. in a year's time we need a second show as good as this one yeah yeah, yeah, the second one was 2015. She must have been in the second season. Um, on IMDb, the episodes very rarely get out of the sevens for the ratings. So that's how, you know, that's that's uh, very poor by the True Detective standards. Yeah, mm. just nothing ha- really felt as though it happened. Um, um, and I've come around to liking Vince Vaughn in other things. Um, the guy that did Bone Tomahawk, uh, mm. one of my favourite directors, he did... Um, Dragged Across Concrete and Brawl in Cell Block 99. And um, oh. Brawl in Cell Block 99 is about um, a, uh, a down-on-his-luck mechanic who has like a, a good history of being a brawler behind him. Has to get into the prison system to take out a hit. Mm. And he has to keep going lower and lower and lower into the more dangerous levels of the, the prison system to get his guy to the point where... He knows, and the audience, we know that he's not getting out, but he's got to see the mission through. Mm. It's really good. Um, that So, Brawl in Cell Block 99 and Dragged Across Concrete, really worth watching. They are really, really good films. Oh, very cool. Uh, I, I think I've seen that doing the rounds. Never really... Um yeah, n- never really sprung out to me as something to check out. But yeah, yeah. it's it's like it's one of those films where you say the synopsis and you go, "Well, it doesn't really sound like my kind of thing," and mm. then you watch it and go, "Oh yeah," because when something's good, it doesn't matter what it's about because you really get sucked into it. Mm. 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 Uh, yeah, some obvious shit. Uh, what, what else have we got? Um, um, oh, week. did you make a start on um, Shit's Creek? I did, yeah. I got halfway through season one. It's good. It's Woo. um, it's 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 nice. It's one of those at the yeah. end of a day, just put on for twenty minutes, isn't it? I um, I, mm. for some reason I thought it'd be like a full forty minutes. So it was it was a, quite a nice surprise to see that there were twenty. Just uh, yeah, just uh, uh yeah, nice something. and breezy. It, it and is. they fly by as well. I it, mean, I I've been watching a lot of classic Simpsons lately, and you know that they feel like they're about forty minutes long because they're crammed full of jokes. Whereas mm. Shit's Creek, it's such easy going it's like it's like dozing off to an episode like, oh i doze off for what 20 minutes it's got yeah. that kind of vibe to it where you're just so immersed and relaxed while watching it that you don't notice how much time has gone by yes exactly all the storylines are very uh easy to follow and you know very simple and the writing is uh, top notch for the most part and the performances are great so yeah i i can absolutely see why you hold it in such regard I think um, um, uh, David, the character David, far and away the best thing about it. Exactly, he, yeah. David is magnificent. He he is. I just cannot get over how <laughs> much I enjoy every single scene that he's in. He steals the show every single time. I'm um, glad you agree. I absolutely adore him. <laughs> yeah, I, I I don't know how he does it as well because... It's a character that that you think would be really insufferable to be around, but somehow he's just got this, like ob- impish charm. Yeah, oblivious charm as well. He's just got no idea what's going on in in the world. <laughs> things just happen to him, and he reacts in this, um, just deer in the headlights type of way. And to watch him <laughs> try and grasp and struggle to to comprehend things is is just wonderful he, he, and then the, when you team him with stevie as well who's always just taking the piss out of him it's like i don't know because your eyebrows never move if you're being serious or not so <laughs> i'm just gonna go with yes <laughs> they make such a wonderful pairing <laughs> yeah it's uh it is it's it's good i have had uh, a lot of fun uh watching one or two again it's, it's one of those similar to what i was saying last week about uh wonderfuls um 
it's not and it's not something I'd binge. Um, yeah. or, or, I probably would back in the day, but these days it's just I, I'm just happy with one, just as a as a topper for for the day yeah. kind of thing, just to just to see you off, uh, see me off, see you off. Um, yeah, it's just really delightful. It's really charming. I'm surprised that there are were there five six seasons or something. Six seasons, yeah, yeah. and um, it was only. David, uh, not David, uh, Daniel Levy and Eugene Levy saying at the end of it, no, it's it's done. Mm. We don't want to do any more because we don't want to we don't want to wear it out. So it's ended where it's ended, and that's where we want it to end. Oh, interesting. And it's thirteen episodes per season, so that's what. Um, God, my maths here: thirteen, twenty-six, thirty-nine, fifty-two, uh, sixty-eight, seventy-eight. Is that right? About seventy-eight episodes. Round about, yeah, just shy of eighty episodes. Wow. That sounds a lot. Um, I mean, I I imagine it's a pretty linear um, narrative from Um, where they start. Stuff happens at its own steady pace. It's Mm. I'm I'm practically at the end of season three. My parents are on holiday, and it's a a family show, which is nice. It's a show we're watching as a whole family, which we haven't done in probably about fifteen to twenty years. I'm surprised Um, at that. If if I'll just jump in because it's mm. so heavily centered around sex the first <laughs> half of the first <laughs> season it's like all the jokes and all the payoffs are that's what it's uh it's kind of geared towards but uh, sorry Karen. it is but not in a sort of um salacious way it's it, mm. it's in a charming sort of like the simpsons back in the day was like pushing the boundaries but still family friendly it sort of feels like that <laughs> right okay um so uh, yeah we've been really enjoying it and um I didn't realise Catherine O'Hara was um, Granny from the Adams Family. Oh, I didn't realise that. Yeah, it's she's been around for a good long while doing just stunt work, essentially. Um, but I can't think of a single character in that show that I don't like spending time with. Yeah, they are all. I, I, I spe- I, <laughs> some of my biggest laughs have come from her actually when she's she seems to develop a bit of an accent from time to time for no yes. discernible reason. <laughs> that gets more pronounced as it goes on. It's very Jenna Maroney. <laughs> it's, it's, it's so much fun. She does such a great job. Um, and um, when when did Eugene Levy become such an attractive masculine man? Because I know. <laughs> I, I think we all know him as as the nerdy... Jim's dad. <laughs> yeah, from American Pie. And and he's very handsome in this. He's, he's very distinguished looking. I'm, I'm mm. just really surprised that... Uh, that, that this was always a thing it, you feel like he could have been a you know more of a um a, a, so the john ham of his day sure sort of i think so yeah rather than just being jewish dad dweeby <laughs> jewish dad um and it, it's passed on to his son as well who's who's also a very good looking gentleman mm. um so yeah they, they they really do come across as as this um you 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 believe in them as a family and that's obviously important uh what's the is it alexa the the daughter alexa who's, yeah who's charming in her own way um yeah it's she just, actually it's, has an arc as well it's it's interesting because you think where, where are they really going to go with these characters in a small town and surely by the end of season one they'll have played out the jokes but mm. they are they do develop and grow slowly as characters which is nice you know mm. they're not they they never truly evolve beyond what the, they are the stereotype yeah yeah exactly um but still there, there's still enough development there that it doesn't feel that they're just treading water and you can watch any episode out of order yeah oh very cool it's um, fun to watch them grow particularly david uh, and alexis as well you know she's coming around and uh, there's a wonderful moment with the parents towards the end of season two as well where yeah it's it's just really nice but at the same time you don't feel that at the end of the day they're going to be like running the town and they'll bring it to like posterity and whatnot and mm. it's like no it's not that kind of show yeah it's just kind of like a, a day in the life really isn't it that seems yeah. to be it i i don't think there's an episode so far where it's spanned across multiple oh maybe it's spanned across multiple but they feel very contained anyway it's not as though mm. um not that that really makes a difference the, but... the main theme of the show from what i understand from what uh, my brother's told me is that it's all about just finding the um the joy in the little things in life yes exactly yeah I can and see it's that. like yep i'll take that that is life passes you by fast enough so mm. don't get bogged down in in everything and just enjoy the moments for what they are yeah yeah absolutely ah yeah so thank you for uh for suggesting it i, I have had a, a lot of fun with it and Excellent. um 
yeah, been been doing um, wonderfalls on the side just as a, as a follow up to to last week um, because I just uh, I think I texted you, didn't I? I was like, I, I I wanted to check and see the quality of of my copy just after talking about it, and then you watch one, and then the next night you think, mm-hmm. yeah, I've got forty minutes spare. I'll watch another. Um, it, it's I, I I'm looking forward to you 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 watching it just to hear your uh, impressions um, because I. <laughs> I, I'm really enjoying it, as I told you, but I'm also very surprised, especially from the second episode, at how dated it feels, which is which is astonishing. <laughs> uh, I mean, it's 18 years later, I suppose, but wow. it, it has that sense that we've almost forgotten about that I've never really seen captured before of the mid-2000s and what that felt like. It is so <laughs> mid-2000s in its feeling. And you can see i think how society's changed its attitudes how different we are as people from how we were back then and uh, what's strange is because the last time i watched it so it, it falls around a character called jay who's uh she's gen y of, of all things which is the generation above ours um <laughs> that before ours and they have a full episode around that about this 24 25 year old girl and she's drifting in life and she doesn't really know what to do last time i watched it i was the same age as her so i've been a <laughs> millennial and just had the very same emotions and things and i kind of watch it now and think would this apply to today's kids and i almost think that you know we've gone so far in, in a different direction that even this mid 2000s nihilism kids that grew up on grunge and stuff is is probably like a, a different sensation to what the series tries to tackle um so i i'm intrigued to see if, if you get the same vibes uh when mm. you eventually watch it i mean it's still i, I love it to bits because it's uh the writing is so sharp it's so witty um but yeah, just just interesting, just really interesting from a from a show that tries to um, look at the existentialism of uh, the mid twenties and going nowhere fast, and mm. um, and how that's changed. Well, you know, yeah, the perspective on what that was mm. <laughs> to what it is now. Yeah, uh, yeah, it's, yeah. It's very well, interesting. That sound really good. Um, yeah, but on the opposite end of the scale, I I have something that I think will really tickle you okay let's do it so so six episodes Mm -hmm. it's called murderville it's based on a british tv version of the same thing so here we go will arnett is a middle-aged embittered detective (laughs) who is ad-libbing throughout each episode and he has to work out who was committing the murder the hook of the show is that every episode he has a guest partner who has to solve the case while he essentially distracts them and tries <gasps> to filter them through. Our first guest is Conan O'Brien. Oh, wow. The second guest is an American football player who is probably the best episode for his sheer enthusiasm <laughs> towards the whole thing. Then it's... Um, oh, I forget his name. He's he's in things like The Eternals and House. Um, Asian-American actor. I always forget his name. Um, oh, um was he in obi-wan as well yes that yeah. guy he's uh, that guy camille langiani camille yeah. langiani sounds about right again he's really good uh then alexis from schitt's creek sharon stone <laughs> who does a hell of a job and then ken jong who is just delightful um it is so much fun because it's as i say they have no idea what's going on will arnett is doing his best to sabotage them or guide them depending on how well they're getting on across the way um it's you know it's three hours worth of content and it's just fun to watch will arnett doing anything especially when it's him at the low end of his life (laughs) as a character (laughs) um i think you'll really like it it is utterly ridiculous and so much fun and even just as a, a sort of who done it you're trying to guess okay so which of the three potential suspects is the killer um based on the clues and evidence we've got it's really good fun that sounds great what's that on have you seen uh, that netflix oh okay ah. we we did 
five and a half episodes before we started the show, which is why I'm running a bit late. <laughs> we did Conan yesterday, got distracted, then it's like, right, okay, but we can finish the series now, I'm sure, before I tie it with Dan. <laughs> so th- there are six episodes in the series? Yeah. Ah, very cool. Oh, you've you've got me torn now, because I feel as though I need to start that. <laughs> you, can, right. you can get it done in a night, and say it's only six episodes, even if you just watch the Conan O'Brien one. Yeah. Um, but Ken Jong is just, he's barely keeping his shit together throughout the entire episode. He's just barely holding on. It's great. <laughs> that sounds awesome. Oh, I'll check that out tonight. That sounds so much fun. Um, there was something else about wanting to change pace too quickly. What was the other thing? Stranger Things? No. Oh, well, I mean, you can talk about that. Do you want to talk about that? I suppose it's good if you can't think of what uh, you were going to bring <gasps> up. I know what it was. It was the Hocus Pocus 2 trailer. Oh, you mean the one that had barely any of the Sanders sisters in it and looked like The Craft 2019? It just looked like everything else is uh, is, is is the nicest way I'm going to phrase yes. it. Yes, it looked exactly like I would have guessed a Hocus Pocus sequel in 2022 would look. Yes, completely devoid of character. Um, uh, filmed the same way everything else is filmed. Uh, the lead character's... Uh, completely interchangeable with everything else you get on Disney from Disney these days. Mm-hmm. Um, there's a black cat because there needs to be a black cat, of I course. guess. Um, Even though he was done at the end of the first movie, why, quite literally. Why wouldn't they just reboot it rather than just pretend, just change things enough th- mm. th- to pretend that the first one was skewed different? I don't understand. Even it. the black candle is is a weird blue melty looking thing now. They couldn't yeah. even get the black candle right. Yeah, the Sanderson sisters' cottage is like in the middle of a town or something. D- did, yeah, I did guess I gentrification. Right? Yeah. I am actually the one thing that did amaze me was that they did they had the restraint to not put I put a spell on you in it. That seemed like such an obvious go to mm. for them in like creative bankruptcy. Of course they'll do that. And they didn't. And I don't know whether that's just because they were so lacking in imagination they couldn't even rip off the only thing people ever talk about <laughs> from that movie. <laughs> I don't know. I imagine I'll hate watch it for the um for, for this just to report back on this but i, I, I what I, what is happening to entertainment it, it got to oh, a point it got to a point five ten years ago where you thought we're at the we're at the dregs now we're in the dregs and they just keep sinking lower and lower and lower and oh boy i don't know where we'll be in another few years um off the back of the uh the hocus pocus trash. 2 trailer my brother my friend and i we um i can't remember how but we we were watching the trailer for the phantom menace and that we watched all the trailers for all the prequels, and it's amazing at how they make them look like exciting films. Mm. Never have I seen such masterful trailers that completely misrepresent the actual content <laughs> of the film. So go back and watch the Phantom Menace trailers, and you'll go, my God, I, I remember what it is to be eight years old, nine years old again, and excited for these movies, because they look fucking awesome. I'm not yeah. going to mince words. They look so good. I remember um, um, the oh. At- Attack of the Clones trailer was one of the very first things I can remember downloading and replaying over and over and over and over again. I watched that trailer so many times. I was so excited for that film, which is one of the reasons, I think, why I was, again, <laughs> talking about <laughs> crippling disappointments, <laughs> why I hated it so much having seen it, um, because it's those expectations, isn't it? And it's just a dross film, but we've gone through that before. Many, many times. Many, many oh, times. Shit. Um, I, I, I'm tempted. I mean, no. You know what? No, we're not discussing Obi Wan. No, we're not. We're not. We're, 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 we're <laughs> we'll save that for another day. We're powering through it. Uh, I, I don't want to discuss that anymore. Yes, I'm done with Star Wars. I'm done with Disney Star Wars. Mm-hmm. I have been done with Disney Star Wars for a while, but every now and again, a glimmer of hatred will surface in a perfectly crystallized nugget. A nice hunk of coal will uh, will form, and it's what? like, nope, got to pass this. Yeah. What one thing I will say is, I don't know why, but I became. I was watching. What was I watching? Probably the Red Letter Media review, so the final few episodes of of, uh, of Obi Wan, and <laughs> I found myself getting annoyed, just completely irrationally, about people <laughs> that uh, look at it all as canon, which we had a conversation mm. about recently. That I just don't. I just can't do it. And the people that that see all of this, and they're trying to, you know, rationalise in their heads all of the inconsistencies 
<laughs> that, that, that take place between the prequels now to Obi Wan to uh, to uh, Rogue One to the originals, and they're trying to do all these mental gymnastics as yep. to how it all it's makes gotta sense. Connect, otherwise my life is worthless. <laughs> yeah, and I just, oh, I just feel as just completely disempowered by all of it. Um, I'm I'm just sad for my youth, and I'm sad for everyone's youth that that, that grew up with those films. <laughs> was invested, yeah. saw, saw them in the cinema, and then has, has had because it does feel as though we've had it all just stripped away from us, um, as though something that was once ours has been taken and desecrated and nailed to a post for all to see, and um, yeah, yeah, it's like it didn't deserve this. No, we're partially to blame for demonising Lucas in the first place to the point where it was more lucrative for him to just sell the franchise than to take another stab at it. But even so, if we'd seen this coming, I well, I mean, Lucas can still deserve it, and he could have, you know, insisted that someone with more um, nous was put in charge of it. So ultimately, he's still to blame. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> rather than allowing <laughs> Kathleen Kennedy to run wild, and again, she is the. De- She's the desecrator. I feel as though the Moriarty. Uh, South Park should uh, remake their Indiana Jones scene where Spielberg and <laughs> Lucas <laughs> rape Harrison Ford and just and just change it to uh, to Kathleen Kennedy and Mark Hamill. Although I, I think Mark, Mark Hamill would probably like it in in his uh, his later years because his outspoken ways. Yeah, yeah. So anyway, we're not doing Star Wars. Um, what? Uh, what was the final thing you wanted to touch upon? Sorry, I think I interrupted. Uh, I can briefly talk about Stranger Things. I'm, That's it, I'm yeah. ready now for the final two episodes, which come out in an hour's time. Um, so I'll be dedicating tomorrow oh, wow. to watching the final. I think the final episode is like two and a half hours long, and the episode before that is probably going to be about an hour and a half. Um, You're the most... So yeah, I'm just going to sit down tomorrow and, and finish it all in one swoop. You're the most excited person I think I've seen about uh, about that. Everyone else is kind of indifferent. <laughs> well, I'm not excited. I just sort of want to get it out the way in one go before, you know, the internet starts flooding itself with its take. Um, I see. So, um, yeah, I've... Ooh, I'm standing in plasma. Um, yeah, I've enjoyed season four more than I thought I would, given that I'd written off the show back in season two. Didn't even get around to season three, as uh, you and I have mentioned in the past. Mm. Um I, I just watched it because I had nothing else to do. And, you know, I'd heard that three is, uh, four is back on course. I was like, oh, okay, sure, why not? I've got nothing else, so I might as well check it out. Um, thoroughly impressed by episode four. Um, four was what really sort of galvanised me to like, want to finish it really quickly. Because, um, you know how they do, like, pairing up of characters, almost like random connections, just to see mm. what works. Mm. They've lumped all of my favourite characters together. And it's just been a delight to spend my time with them. Whereas, like, um, uh, I'm trying to remember their character names, um, like Eleven and Mike and Will, uh, Hopper to some extent. I, I don't really care about them at all. So I can just sort of watch those for what it is. But the characters I do like are all hanging out and solving a mystery together with the cool monsters. So it's like, yeah, I'm, I'm on board for that. Oh, God, I'm so close to death. Um... So, yeah, I've I've just been enjoying it for what it is, which is a nice 80s-style throwback horror movie with lots of intrigue. Um, the season finale ends with sort of providing some information about things, like, okay, this is what it's all been sort of leading to. This is what it's all about. Uh, why won't I heal? Um, and that's not been too impressive. As a season-half finale, I came away thinking... Oh, really? That's it? Well, I, I I could have guessed that because you spent the last, what felt like, 20 minutes of this episode unveiling the very thing that you feel is a cliffhanger. Mm. Um, so that was a bit weird. Um, and I feel the villain's motivation, now that it's been thoroughly put down on the table, isn't as compelling as when it's just a mindless monster. Mm. Yeah, we, this new monster, uh, Vekram, or v- Venka, I think it's called, Um Perfectly fine monster, you know, it's, do, it's doing the trick. Um, but they've this one has a voice, unlike the others, and an actual character arc and motivation. And now they've spelt out the motivation. It's like, well, your backstory is a little bit weak. Um, so we'll see what happens off the back of that. But yeah, I'm, I'm, I want to see how it finishes. Um, if it can stick the landing, not too sure. 
But as I say, ep- episode four is what had me because um, it spent a lot of time dictated to just one character in particular. Um, mm. One of my favourite characters. Probably my favourite character, actually. Um, and, um, yeah, I, I'm i so used to bad media these days, as in badly put together media, badly edited, badly directed, badly cut, um, badly soundscaped, like emotionally manipulative soundscaping that every now and again when a genuinely good scene comes out that does decide to do long takes and use music appropriately and and not doing flashy long takes but you know it's not like 15 edits within a 30 second piece of dialogue you know there's actual holding of an emotional moment Mm. um and i found myself getting drawn into the scene going oh my god it's it's been like 10 seconds and we've not cut away and she's still talking um <laughs> wow and and then it you know we have a bit of a cut just for like a a, a wide pan shot and then we get another close-up and and again it, it holds camera it holds focus and it's like wow <laughs> i remember when this used to be the standard of good things <laughs> i like this um and yeah as as the scene builds up and up and up it's like oh man i'm i'm really invested in this character i i hope nothing bad happens to them and then stuff keeps happening and it's like mm, i it's the final season you know if they wanted to to start killing people and and doing it that way this is the sort of time to be doing it and uh yeah so as as the episode came to it's like final moments um i didn't even realize that i'd been holding my breath for like a good seven seconds or so waiting for events to play out and then just as the credits roll just going oh (laughs) it really caught me off guard because i was not expecting you know a a middle episode of stranger things season four of all things to be the episode the moment that i was completely utterly emotionally invested in a character in a scene that i hadn't thought about in the best part of like four or five years Mm um so yeah credit where it's due and as i was telling my brother um i felt at the time that i'd hit my apex by that point so like i'm pretty sure the show will not get any better for me than this point like th- this is me tapped out now everything else is just gravy and so far that's been the case i've still been enjoying it a lot episodes five six and seven a lot of stuff that i'm really enjoying in them but nothing that's come close to the the pinnacle that i was at by the end of episode four Mm. um and i don't expect to be there again by the final two episodes um just just for me personally but yeah i'm i'm curious to see what it can pull out the bag because there's there's lots of good stuff going on with it and uh music is playing a big part like i was saying kate bush which you're probably well aware of oh yeah you know the thingamajiggy um Kate Bush has been fairly instrumental in uh, in making the series as earwormy as it is, mm. and there's a lot of speculation about what other music is going to come into it in in the final two episodes because it's sort of a a big deal, um, which is nice. You know, they're they're using music in a um, oh god, what, what's the term? I, I throw it out every now and again. Uh, diegetic uh, music mm. is quite diegetic to the actual purpose of of how they're solving solutions within this show Mm. and uh, it's been kind of fun watching into that speculation going oh what uh, what might this character's song be or what might this song be for this character and people trying to piece it together based on what they know what they may have heard in previous seasons what they've heard in this season so that's been a fun little game to watch you know playing out on the internet of people throwing their uh, throwing their lot in um yeah yeah, so that's that's my Friday. I'm going to just sit down and watch the last five hours of uh, Stranger Things and, oh. uh, and go from there. Well, that's good. I'm glad you're enjoying it. Yeah. Um, maybe I'll... Well, it depends how you say the, the, the season finishes if I uh, jump on board. I uh, Yeah, I, I think... I can't th- uh, say... I, it wasn't the kind of thing that I thought I'd go back to. It's only because I had the downtime mm. to be getting on with it. Um, so I don't know whether it's just me out of the two of us that would be sort of in any way affected by it. But... Yeah, you might enjoy it. Hmm. Hmm. I've got plenty to j- jump into anyway, so... Mm. We'll, we'll Definitely uh, Murderville alone should keep you occupied for a while. Yes. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> You'll be on that tonight. You at least watch the, the Conan episode. I will. I'm really looking forward to it. It looks uh, really intriguing. Uh, yeah, you've, you've definitely whetted my appetite with that. Um, I, just thinking... Um, what else? What else? What else? Anything else on your side? Um, I 
don't think so. Um. Ah. Uh, ah. Uh, nah. Nah. I think that's. I think that's been about my week. <laughs> <laughs> That'll do us then for now. We'll uh, update you. On, oh, is there anything we should uh, coordinate to watch next week for watch? Watch for next week. We we kind of integrated the R and Rs into the hangout really recently. Yeah, yeah, just while the summer months are going on. <laughs> yeah, uh, while we're waiting on our lives to sort of recalibrate. Um, mm. uh, well, we've watched Morbius now. You know, where do you go from there? <laughs> oh, there is nowhere to go apart from in the grave. Uh, uh, is there anything you've been meaning to watch that you can twist my arm? Hmm. <gasps> That's what I was going to say in the Doctor Strange thing, actually. Um, there is a film, you've probably heard of it. Uh, 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 what's it called? What's it called? It's called uh, Everything Everywhere All at Once. All at Once. Yes. I have heard of it. I've heard it's the good version of Multiverse it's, of Madness. It's what Multiverse of Madness should have been. Uh, have you got any? I don't know where you'd find it or where it's available. No, neither do I. I, th- I think we might have access to it because I think it's on Disney+. Plus. Oh, is it? I think. Let me have a quick look. Um, we We definitely got it on one of the boxes because it popped up the other day. And I have been meaning to get round to watching it. Let me see. Let me see. Oh, well, you're looking that up. Um, I, on an impulse buy, because you know me, impulse buyers are my thing. I um, I bought the Damagin. Da- Damar- yeah, I think it's Damagin trilogy. Uh, 1960s era um, kaiju films about feudalistic Japan. And oh. these, uh, they're basically class struggle films set during the Showa age. Oh, that sounds um, cool. And um, maybe merge, actually. Um, uh, well, no, during the feudal Japan age. And, uh, yeah, it's about, you know, uh, greedy landlords and land barons kicking out their poor tenants and the tenants turning to uh, to a god to avenge them. But mostly it's about, you know, it's just a drama with almost seven samurai, you know, this band of mm. plucky outlaws and, and down and outs trying to um, plead some sense into these greedy land barons. And then ultimately, their god turning up like uh, um, Talos and smashing <laughs> the shit out of everything. But um, yeah, they come highly reputed. And I've been umming and ahhing about the box set for a, a couple of months now. I'm just thinking, ah, sod it, I'll bite the bullet. But um, yeah, if you watch the trailers for it, um, Arrow released it. So they've done a, a good mock up trailer with a lot of Hans Zimmer sounding uh, impressive score. But they look really good. Um, and. and shockingly good effects as well you know godzilla looks very rubbery and gamera looks very rubbery you know they're very limited in what they can do Mm. but this is just a guy with a like a set stone face um rampaging around and so it looks more convincing than men in rubber monster suits oh very cool so uh yeah i'm I'm really excited to do those that was it sorry um hans zimmer just reminded me um there were moments during the morbius movie which had a really bizarre intro didn't you think the way it was like neon day glow yes like it was Vice City or something. I couldn't get my head around anything about that. Inter- Sorry, Karen. Yeah. Uh, but the score, I thought it was Hans Zimmer because mm. of the number of times it was shockingly similar to the Dark Knight's theme, particularly when he was running up the rooftops before he did that weird warpy thing off the other side of the building. And there were moments where they took the score from Into the Spider-Verse and gave it a tweak as well. Um, its entire score was robbed from other more successful movies. Really? Yeah, if you go back and listen to certain scenes, it's like that is, that is the theme from the Dark Knight. The boom, <laughs> boom. <laughs> it's shameless, and I thought, well, it's got to be Hans Zimmer just getting lazy. And it's like, nope, <laughs> no, it's uh, it's someone else. I didn't Impressive. pay any attention to it, but then again, I was half zoned out for all of that film. I think so. That's why I didn't. Uh, yeah, um, Doctor Strange's score was decent. I thought was that I found it completely forgettable. I th- Danny Elfman has not impressed me in the slightest recently, so it's you know, I, I'd, I'd say it's above what I was expecting from him. And mm. uh, you know, props for the '90s X-Men uh, sting. So that's that's about yeah. It. Well, apparently that's the theme they're going to be using for the the new X-Men series, X-Men '97. The one that's got oh, that contemporary gonna... politics in it. Wonderful. That's how it's credited at the end of the movie, uh, X Men '97. So that's their way of going. No, it's our intellectual property. We don't have to pay rights to the original composers of one of the best theme tunes of all time because mm. we've got our own version now, and it's just different enough. Mm. Oh god, I hate the House of Mouse. Michael Rat can go fuck himself. Michael. <laughs> 
<laughs> um, everything, everywhere, all at once. I keep seeing the film was released on digital streaming platforms on June the 7th, but nothing actually ever mentions the digital streaming platforms. I can't see it on uh, Netflix or Amazon mm. Prime or I don't know. So, um, yeah, if, if you have an interest in watching it and managed to find it, uh, let me know and yeah. we'll watch it. I mean, a lot Absolutely. of people saying just as I'm scrolling around that it's uh, like the best film of the year so far. So <laughs> it'd be interesting to check it out. Yeah, well, that'd be good because there's actually been stuff I've enjoyed this year. I mean, not all of it from this year. Like mm. Shit's Creek is a couple of years old now uh, and, and so on. But it's it's been nice to have things I'm enjoying again, particularly because yeah. the year was off to such a bad start. <laughs> so many bad things kicked off the year. Dumbledore. Doctor Strange. Um, I didn't see the Eternals, but I did watch Shang Chi, and that was awful. Um, <laughs> uh, Jurassic Park Dominion, which is absolute dog shit, but enjoyable enough for the Morbius point of view. If it's so bad, it's good. Um, so yeah, it'd be nice to continue the current streak I'm on of good things. Mm. Yeah. Well, let me know. And uh, yeah, great. Brilliant. That'll do it for this week's episode of the Charisma Vacuum Hangout. Thank you for joining us, everybody. We are here every week at 9pm. Uh, uh, sorry, Thursday is 9pm UK time. Come and join us. Talk to us about things, stuff, whatever. We enjoy things. We, we, well, do, we do. Not as many things as we used to enjoy, but... Actually, yeah, that's a total lie. We've done nothing but bitch for the most part of this episode. I so enjoyed we... Murderville. You enjoyed Murderville. Shit's Creek. Shit's Creek. Yeah. The rest of it's uh, I enjoyed Morbius. <laughs> as <laughs> no, much as one true. can enjoy Morbius. Then, then I don't enjoy things. Matt does enjoy things. <laughs> Unless it's Doctor Strange. Uh, <laughs> yes. Thank you, guys. Take it easy. We'll see you next time. Farewell. Goodbye. Adios. Adios.